friends, welcome back to Julia at Home. I'm Julia. For those of you who are new here, I have three children. I have one who's on my back taking a nap and hopefully she'll stay asleep because we've got at least four teeth cutting through right now. So we're struggling a little bit. <laughs> so she's one. Then I also have a daughter who is seven who's going into second grade this year and a son who's five who's going into his kindergarten year. And I've been homeschooling them since they were toddlers, pretty much. I decided to homeschool when my oldest was a baby and have been researching ever since. Today's video is about how I do circle time in our homeschool. So circle time for me is just a time where we gather together and do songs and poems and finger plays. And through the years, I've put in a couple other things just to tie them all in. But it's it's supposed to be this just together moment. And um, it's it's basically beauty and word. And I really like it to have a seasonal feel to it. So a lot of the poems and the songs are seasonal. Some of them are not, but a lot of them connect to, you know, leaves falling in the fall, snow in the winter. So you will see that in how I prepare and organize. And my circle time is really inspired by a Waldorf style circle time. And um, I am not by any means an expert in Waldorf. This is one of the areas that I kind of pull from Waldorf for. Um, and they would do... Um, and to the best of my knowledge, they would do a, a circle time where it incorporates a lot of movement and a lot of song, and they just move through the songs and the poems. Um, and, and they would do the same ones over and over again for a month so that the children would learn them and they'd all be doing them together. And theirs are also often seasonal based. All that being said, I like to do this. I try to incorporate all the ages thus far. I don't know how I will do it when I have, say, a middle schooler, but I'm not there yet, so I'm not gonna worry about it. In this video, I want to first go through with you how I plan and organize my circle time, and then I will share with you the resources that I have used. I will try to put timestamps below in case you want to skip ahead to those resources. So the first thing I wanna show you is my circle time binder, and it's not labeled for some reason, but this is my circle time binder. I should really make a nice cover for it. Um, inside I have songs and poems that are organized by season. So there's summer songs and summer poems, uh, fall songs, fall poems, and so on. And then at the end I have um, songs and poems that are not, uh, that do not fall in any of those categories. And um, I also have a section in the back for Italian songs and poems. Um, although I mostly have those in books. And again, I will talk about where I found all these um, it, when I get to the resources. So I have this binder. It stays usually in the office downstairs unless I'm using it. Um, and each year I will go through it. I will add some stuff. This year I cleaned it out and took out a few things. Um, but it's, it's a place for me to go and choose which songs and poems we're going to do this year and have them all because um, I like to have a copy to read during circle time. So that brings me to the next part of my organization. I have this clipboard. This is my circle time clipboard and it lives in my morning time basket. And you will have seen me pull this out in, in videos when like days in the life and other videos like that. Um, and on the front here, I, I typed out a new routine for this year, um, but it just goes through the, it's a, a circle time cheat sheet for me, if you will. So it goes through what I want to do, the um, rhythm, I guess, of circle time. And if we're having a day where we're just having an off day or really busy, I might not do all of these things, but this would be the kind of ideal that I'm going for. So we start with a gathering song um, and that's the same every time. I did, I did put down two choices here. Um, that's Come, Come, Whoever You Are, or Spirit of Life, and those are from um, our Unitarian Universalist congregations, or Unitarian Universalist. Those are, those are popular Unitarian Universalist songs that I like, so um, I put them there. Then we have a lighting verse. Um, ours this year is May We Have Eyes That See, Hearts That Love, and hands that are willing to serve, which is also a um, is a closing verse actually that was used um, in our Unitarian Universalist congregation um, in Maryland before we moved, and I just that resonated with me. Um, then we do our calendar time and our month poem from the Elsa Besco book, which I will show you in the resources. 
Um, then we do our poems, songs, and finger plays. And then we also, and I put under there, also practice our recitation poems. This year I added baby songs to make sure that I'm just focusing on the baby a little bit as well. Italian songs and poems, and then math facts. This is one that will get dropped if we're really busy, but um, practicing skip counting or multiplication tables essentially with my second grader. And um, I might actually start the tens with my son in kindergarten this year. We'll see. I've just been counting just, you know, single like one through 20 with him. Um, and so I, I think he's pretty solid in that though, because he just wanted something to do like his sister. Um, and then if we have a character book or holiday book, which we won't every day, um, I will, I will then do that. And then we do gratitude journals. And then I have a closing, um, which this year I chose spirit of life, make us truly thankful for these and all other blessings, um, which works, especially since we do it right after our gratitude journals. Um, so that's my general outline for circle time. And under that I have, so we're in July. That's where we're starting. I have a sheet for July and it just, it lists the songs I'm planning on doing in July, the poems, finger plays. And then I just listed holidays that are in July that I want to be aware of and what that date is. Um, and, um, so that I can, I can see that and pull out holiday book in advance. Um, and then under that, I actually have printed out lyrics for songs and the poems. So, um, there's a whole stack in here you can see, and I've gotten them from various places. And again, I will talk about that in the resource section. Um, I usually do songs and then poems. Yeah. And I've got an Italian one in the back here as well. So this is my clipboard that that lives, you know, in our morning time basket, but I also prepare each of the months ahead of time at the beginning of the year. So let me show you that. This is my folder. It's pretty. I like it. I like flowers if you can't tell. Um, <laughs> so in here, I just have um, clipped together the sheet for the beginning of the month that lists what the songs and poems are, we're going to do are, and then the um, printed out poems and songs are behind them. And this year, I actually am doing many of the songs and poems for two months. So what that looks like is there's a couple songs let's see in here like for example oats peas beans and barley grow and mother earth are songs that are in both july and august and i think there's also a couple poems that are the same are also in july and august and so i will just move those when i when i switch them out i will just keep them in the pile with july until the month that we don't do them again and then they will be put away so that's my plan for that and then the next month so then then we're adding um a couple songs like blow and blow are is also going to be done in september so i tried to do that this year so that we just have a little more time with each of the songs but we're still putting some new things in each month um i have found i have found that i don't end up doing this every day so in my ideal world, we sit down for morning time every day and we start with circle time and then we do our other stuff, but that just doesn't happen. So I'm, my goal is to do at least twice a week. And that's one of the reasons I decided to extend some of these poems and songs into two months because it gives us more repetition of those poems and songs. Whereas if we were doing it every day, I would want to change them up more often. I did not list specific baby songs. So um, I have like a little book from Love Every and I have some ideas in my head of ones you know, those songs that all the babies and kids know, right? Like Wheels on the Bus and the Itsy Bitsy Spider. So I'm just going to come up with those as we go. If I feel like I need a list later, then I can do that. But for right now, I haven't made a list of that. Oh, but in regards to the folder, this lives downstairs in the office on my desk in a little basket there. So each month I just switch it out. But um, only the current month is actually up in our morning basket at any given time. I almost forgot to mention, I actually have poems picked out for my kids for recitations. So how I'm going to do it is I chose three for each of them to choose from. So they choose one out of the three that I set aside as ideas for them. And then they will also live in the clipboard. 
And I think my plan is to do one for just like one for each term, but it's really going to be like how fast they learn them and how comfortable they're feeling with it. So that's what I'm doing for recitation. Just didn't want to forget to mention that. I hope that was helpful and made sense with how I organize my circle time materials. If you have questions, please let me know in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer them. Now on to resources. So I think the biggest question you probably have is how do I choose the songs and poems and finger plays? So these are things that I've actually collected over many years. Um, one of my favorite resources when I was just starting out, and I actually don't have a copy of it, but is Julie Andrews. Um, children's treasury of all seasons I think I'm saying that right I will have it linked below it will probably be an affiliate link um, and I actually took it out from the library when my oldest was a toddler and we had read through it while we had it and I ended up photocopying several of the poems that I really liked and I still use those regularly some other favorite resources um, for younger kids are um, poetry by Robert Louis Stevenson I have, actually, I have um, A Child's Garden of Verses. I love this. I just love his poetry. I use a lot of his poems. Christina Rossetti is also a great poet for younger kids. I don't actually have one of her books, but you can just search for a lot of her poems online and I found them that way. This I've had since I was um, probably in middle school. And I think a lot of these are better for older children, but this is also a really good resource as well. I honestly don't even know if they make this anymore. But you can look for like a classic poetry book and start from there. I also looked on Pinterest for Waldorf verses and Waldorf songs. Um, I am generally a pretty musical person. <laughs> for most of my life, I actually wanted to be a musical theater actress. I wanted to be on Broadway. And so I know quite a few mus musical theater and other songs. So I incorporate those as well. And I don't really have one good source for you, but um, The Sound of Music is a really good place to start. Um, if you know Do Re Mi, you'll get that. Two seasonal poetry books that we use regularly. This first one is Around the Year with Elsa Besco, and I have it, often I have it displayed next to our calendar for the current month. Um, July is actually one of my favorites because it has really pretty pictures along with the poem. Um, I often even like the pictures better than I like the poems, but it's a good seasonal poem and um, it just, it creates a good rhythm to just keep reading these. And then I love this book. This is going to be our second or third, might be our third year using this. Um, Sing a Song of Seasons, a nature poem for each day of the year. So it really does, it, it goes through each month and has each day has a poem. So this is July, I think this is the 11th, yeah. Um, so yeah, and there, it's got beautiful pictures in it. And I really, I really like this one. And you could just get this one and read through the, that particular day, which is what we do. Um, but looking through this, you could also just get poems to pull out and repeat um, like I do with the others. For songs, one of my favorite resources is Come Follow Me by, I wanna say Lorraine Nelson Wolf, and I will have it linked below. There's two volumes, I have both volume one and two. Um, unless she's come out with another one, in which case I don't know, but I'd have to get it. Um, I just bought them on YouTube and then I've actually burned CDs. So we have it in the car as well. And they're Waldorf, um, seasonal songs. And so they're just like really gentle, nice music for children. And I use a lot of those in my circle time and I just listen to them and memorize them myself. And I will listen and type out the lyrics. So I have those because I do like to have all the lyrics and the poems. Um, I like to have them all either printed or copied, but a hard copy in my clipboard. Um, even though for most of the songs I actually have them memorized, it's just, I, I just like having them there. Another good artist that I like to get um, her albums is Elizabeth Mitchell. So I've used a couple of her songs and she does some folk songs um, that she didn't write on her um, CDs as well. And so I've used some of those. Um, I will also link below a couple websites. Um, the, uh, I want to say Little Songsters, the name, I'm not 100% sure, but this is one I've recently found that has American folk songs on it. And then there's a website I got a lot of Waldorf verses and finger plays from when I was first starting to create these circle times from like her own circle times. And I can't remember the name of it right now, but if it still exists, I will link it below. It's been a little while. A few other resources that we use during circle time. So I mentioned calendar time. You will have seen this in videos as well. 
this is our calendar and I it's been so long I made this when my youngest was a toddler and I got the idea from some from a blogger online and I can't remember who and I also think I got the um these little number calendar number cards from them as well so I will see if I can find them and I will link it below if I can I believe I got these from Imagine Our Life and these might be from some of these others might be from a Montessori um uh the Montessori print shop kit, I think. Um, but I created this. I laminate, cut out and laminated things um, years and years ago. We've been using it and going strong. I want to create an Italian one for this year, and I haven't quite done that yet. Um, yeah, so we move we move the ring. It's just a, um, I don't even know how, what to call it. Those rings that you can use on um, to like hold things together. And I just wrapped it in ribbon. And I think it looks nice that way. <laughs> and that, so that marks today. And the kids can take turns moving the rings. Although, to be honest, um, neither of them have been really interested in that recently. But I got another little one who will want to move it soon. So that'll be good. I also want to show you our gratitude journals. These live in our morning time box. Um, these I made out of... So we did, like, watercolor on the outsides. And then I formed them into little, little books. Um, this one's mine. And we just like go through and write down um, and we haven't done this every day so there's still there's still lots of room there just a couple of things that we are grateful for um, and I try to encourage them not to do the same thing every day if we're kind of in a rut I might come up with some prompts um, and you can look I just usually look on Pinterest for like gratitude prompts and there's a lot of them um, my daughter was gifted these gel, glitter gel pens so we use those for the gratitude journals and they stay in the box. Character and holiday books. I don't want to go into too much detail in this video um, because I'm still putting them together, but let me, I will show you. I have shelves over here actually next to me with, um, I have a shelf that has like character and religion books on it. And so I will be pulling from that um, books on kindness, gratitude, generosity. And then I have ordered and don't have yet some anti-racist books and some more diverse um, uh, more diverse books that I will also be working into that as well. And then I have a shelf that is seasonal books that I keep up high and not accessible to the kids except in season. And those have holiday books in them too for the various seasons. So I like to pull the seasonal ones down so they have access to them. And then I will pull out those um, specific holiday books to read just before the holiday. And that's my circle time plan for this year. It feels good to have that all organized and ready to go. I have to tell you, not a lot of my subjects are that organized yet, so that's going to be a big task for me over the next few days. I would be happy to share what songs and poems and such I'm doing each month with you, and um, let me know if you want to see videos and in what context. I would also be really happy to share them as a document, but unfortunately my blog has been having a lot of technical issues and I just have not had the capacity to deal with it so if you have any ideas on how I can convey those to you let me know I don't know about sharing like lyrics and poems and stuff just because of copyright but I'm happy and I will link below to sources where I have found them on the internet already thank you so much for watching this video I hope you are well please like with that thumbs up button below please subscribe if you have not already and I will talk to you later. Gotta go do some more planning now.